Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's so much chatter going on in regards to European Super League. Look, honestly, this time around, I'm really bored with it. We'll touch up on it right at the end. But the blockbuster news that's moving around is in regards to Napoli striker Victor Oshiman. Let's talk about all of these and many injured players returning back, which is going to be a massive boost for us. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. First up, Chelsea have identified Napoli striker Victor Oshiman as their primary striker target for the 2023 summer window. This is coming from Graham Bailey. In all honesty, I don't know how much I rate Graham Bailey. There's a lot of stuff that this brother has said, and uh, many things seem to be a little bit of a you know, shot in the in the in the open open uh, you know air like it doesn't sometimes it doesn't seem to have substance from Graham Bailey. But look, it's understandable that a player like Victor Oshiman is in high demand because he right now is probably one of the best strikers in world football, if not the best. I mean, Napoli are flying. There's a lot of players in Napoli that are that are in high demand. But me personally, look, first of all. Is there a need for a striker for Chelsea Football Club? I personally think there is. Look, at the end of the day, most like teams that are generally successful, I know Man City in the last couple of seasons have done it with a false nine, but teams that are generally successful, especially in the Premier League or any other league, and, and whether it be in Europe as well in terms of Champions League and Europa League and all that, having a prolific striker is is one of the you know pillars of of building success and look at chelsea you know in this particular season and also last season and in recent seasons we don't score enough goals goals are so difficult to come by obviously we have a curse with the number nine situation a lot of our number nines just simply don't work out very few have the likes of didier well didier dropped up played as a number nine obviously didn't have the number nine jersey but um you know diego costa is another one but, yeah, we're massively cursed. We're massively cursed and we need the goals. We badly, badly need the goals. So from that perspective, I can understand. I know we've got David Dutra Fofana. I know we've got Armando Broya. But as I've said in recent times, I don't know whether they're, you know, they're ready as yet in terms of leading a title contendership, contendership charge in the Premier League next season, which... I feel like there has to be. I know a lot of people will say, "Miz, you're deluded if you think we're gonna we're gonna challenge for the title next season." I'm sorry, with the level of investment that we're making. Yes, I understand there is a time of gelling period and whatnot, but this is where you you know the the the, the objectives will be looked at. Grand Potter, how quickly can he turn this around? I personally don't think our owners will want to wait as long as Arsenal has waited in recent times. So look. I think someone I think I think a striker is something that we're gonna pursue, but in terms of Victor Oshiman, he's touted to be somewhere around 150 million euros. The demand, as I said, for some of these Napoli players is huge. Napoli's flying. Napoli is probably one of the I'd say even bigger than dark horses. They're one of the favorites to win the Champions League. They're on target to win the Serie A. And let's not forget one Aurelio. Uh, De Laurentiis, uh, the president of Napoli, ain't going to make it easy. He's already mentioned we are not forced to sell any players. We don't have any debt. You best believe if we are looking to pursue this particular player, the price is going to be astronomical. And come summer, none of these long-term contracts anymore that we've been able to find the loophole in, which is going to get blocked up by U um, UEFA. So unless we find another loophole to make this happen i don't see how we're going to splash out all of that money again on top of all the money that we've already spent and to be honest to a certain degree i'm starting to feel a little bit embarrassed by all of this money you know all these rival rival fans keep talking about how much money we spent and i need to start seeing some results i really do but as i said there is a need for a striker there is a need for a striker i think 
you know, having players like Havertz, don't forget Nkunku, potentially Jao Felix might stay around full time. And if he stays around as well, there's a lot of money that's needed for Jao Felix. So is there going to be even more funds to splash on someone like Victor Oshman? That's another question. But players like Havertz, players like Jao Felix, players like Nkunku, they like to play behind a striker. <laughs> if you don't have a striker, then that's an issue. Now, once again, some of you guys might say, well, Miz, David Dutra, Fafana, he needs to be the striker up front. And look, I, I want to see. I want to see how bold Graham Potter is because this season I see no reason why he can't use David Dutra, Fafana. And, you know, if he turns out to be well, maybe he gives us a bit of a, you know, look into next season whether David Dutra, Fafana is capable of leading the line. As In regards to Amanda Breuer, I think, I think there's a massive question mark with his injury. But... How do we pursue a player like Victor Oshiman? I think we're going to have to make a wholesale of, you know, players that need to that need to go. Habits is a huge one. We're potentially going to get quite a bit of money out of Habits. He's probably the one that can yield the most money. I'm thinking somewhere around 50 million at least if he goes back to Bundesliga. You've got to raise funds. You have to raise funds by selling players. Christian Pulisic, Hakim Ziyech. Havertz, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Conor Gallagher, and so many more. There's plenty other players that we potentially have to sell to raise funds. And look, we are not going to be the only team that's going to be after Victor Oshiman. Um, there's going to be many other teams that are going to be after him. But yeah, does he does he change us? A hundred percent. You know, the 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 whole, our team is is deemed to be known as the super team you know <laughs> right now we're known as the super team there's all obviously there's all sorts of notion that's gone around for um, european super uh, league we're the super team uh, at the moment with all these talented players in in in, in our football club so look, look ladies and gentlemen let me know what your thought is in regards to victor Oshman. i think he's a fine fine player but how it happens, how do we deal with Napoli? It's not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. But, you know, Napoli at the end of the day um, would like to make a handsome amount of money, you know, if they have an opportunity. Obviously, you know, nothing's going to happen anymore this season. The, the window is closed. Uh, and as I said, Napoli is in target to win the Serie A. They're a big shout for the Champions League. And maybe in the summer, they could look into perhaps cashing in on some of these assets, but they may not. They may look to build something. You know, Napoli, Napoli, I don't think, are one of those clubs that, you know, the selling type of clubs. Do you know what I mean? Like, they they pride themselves, um, and, and I'm pretty sure they'd like to dominate the Serie A for a very, very long time, and also in Europe as well. But let me know, ladies and gentlemen, how you feel about Victor Oshman. Do you think it's actually possible or not? Chelsea finally making headway with injuries. James, Chilwell, Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Kovacic all available. Fofana and Zakaria stepped up their comeback this week, which is great. Also told N'Golo Kante has done some very light work with his teammates, a part of his recovery. So great. N'Golo Kante looks like to be slowly returning. And all of these players mentioned he is looking to return very, very soon. Some will probably return uh, immediately. So look, massive, massive booster for Grand Potter. Look, we, we don't have any more excuses, to be honest. Like, we need to start picking up victories. The one return that I really want to talk about is Matteo Kovacic, ladies and gentlemen, has returned to Chelsea. Look, as critical as I've been in recent times in regards to Kovacic, and I think a lot of you guys have been critical as well, there doesn't seem to be a final sort of end product from Kovacic's skills, the talent that he has, the involvement that he has in the first phase, in the second phase, but it doesn't materialize into anything in the final phase. Having said all of that and having been critical about Kovacic, I still want to see him partner up with Enzo Fernandez. With all the new faces that we've brought in and talented faces that we've brought in in the likes of Jean Felix, Modric, um, you know, Madueke and Enzo Fernandez, of course, in midfield, I feel like let's give a chance to Kovacic to showcase what he can now do with more quality in front of him. I mean, look, we've all seen Kovacic. There are times where he'll put on a magnificent pass and it just doesn't end up being a goal. And that's not Kovacic's fault. But there's also been times where I've seen Kovacic dribble 
through the middle, looks great, the drive looks brilliant, and then the pass goes astray, ends up being a goal kick or ends up being a, a um, throwing. So I'm keen to see. I'm keen to see. We, we know the talent of Kovacic. We've seen it in Croatia as well in the World Cup. So there's no doubt about the talent. And, and, and now I really want to see how he does with the quality around him. Um, previously, I'll, you know, the, the, some of the people that played around Kovacic just seemed a bit clueless. And I don't know whether that might have been a factor of the downfall of his performance. And I think this can be said for many players. I think it can be said for Mount as well. Could Mount improve with, with better players in and around him? And could Havertz improve with many other players improve with better players in, in and around them probably maybe they could maybe they can but only only you know time will tell and also the more matches these guys play with with the new faces is what's going to determine so look i'm keen to see exactly how kovacic does um if he is fully fit i actually want to see him play against west ham along with enzo i think in tandem both will take turns as to who want, who needs to go forward, who needs to stay back. And I think someone like Kovacic, you know, will allow Enzo Fernandez to bomb up every now and then and, and showcase his creative uh, side of things in the final third. So, yeah, and as I said, when Kovacic goes for a drive, Enzo Fernandez can dig it, you know, stay deep. These double pivot players, I think both of them have to be equally good on the ball, um, Obviously, if one of them was defensively good, fantastic. Um, but on the ball, I think I think it cannot be compromised in the double pivot. So, look, I'm keen to see. Obviously, when Zakaria comes back and he's fully fit, I think he will be a massive shout as well. Um, I think at that point, Zakaria and Enzo, in my opinion, should be the first um, first choice pivot. And then, obviously, when Angelo Kante is fully fit, I think I think Kante and Enzo Fernandez will be very very good indeed. Chelsea are speaking to Lewis Hall representatives. New contract has been discussed. It's not completed yet, but it's one for the new deal in talks alongside Kante and especially Thiago Silva. Main priority, good to see. Look, Kante, Thiago Silva, especially Thiago Silva. I think we should tie him down for at least another season. In regards to Lewis Hall, look, he's a talented youngster. There is no doubt about that. He's got pace. He's, he's got good te technical ability. Definitely has to work on his shooting because he gets into very juicy positions to score goals and it doesn't end up going to the back of the net. So he can work on that. Obviously, there's plenty of areas that he can work on, but there's a clear talent. There is a clear talent and there could be an explosive player uh, in here. Look, I've been very distant to critically anal analyze him uh, in the last few games when he started. Has he made mistakes? Of course he has, but he's inexperienced. That's going to happen. So... Um, I don't hold that against him. And I think I think at times he might have played because there's been injuries uh, in, in those areas and hence why he's been the default selection. So, look, once again, give him a contract extension. No problems. He's part of the Chelsea first team squad now. And just build up his experience slowly but surely. Bring him off the bench. Give him those minutes. And hopefully, you know, Lewis Hall becomes one day a key you know a key player for Chelsea Football Club it's only going to mean uh, great things for us now next up ladies and gentlemen Los Angeles FC have agreed a deal in principle with Chelsea to loan forward Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and now this also ties up with that Victor Oshiman situation where it looks like we're getting rid of Aubameyang no problems doesn't fit our plan um, I don't know how like th there's no one coming out and telling us whether this move can actually happen still now, uh, because apparently under FIFA rules, you can't play for three different teams in one season. So I don't know if this is entirely true or not. Once again, Graham Bailey, but you best believe if, if Aubameyang is still sticking around till the end of the season, come summer, he's going to go, which means once again, a striker is is going to be looked at. You know, Ivan Tooney's name is being thrown around, but obviously he's got those you know, charges, gambling charges. So watch this space for summer, the pursuit for striker. Last but not least, let's talk about this European Super League. I'm not going to go into too much detail. All I'm going to say is this is the new proposal, ladies and gentlemen. European Super League, as you know, massive backlash last time around. 
big, big chaos, protest, and before you knew it, it was shut down immediately. The Premier League clubs, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, they quickly, and Spurs as well, uh, Man United, they quickly shut it down because of the backlash from fans. This time around, this is what's been proposed. European Super League returns with proposed new structure, multi-division competition. So I think it's much like that uh, Nations League, the, the, the one that they played during the, during the international break, the European teams. So you'll have like a Division 1, Division 2, and maybe you know promotion and, and, and relegation. So it could be a league in that sort of uh, structure 60 to 80 teams so and apparently it's not close like the first proposal um it will be open to anyone you can qualify for it i believe you know that that whole promotion and relegation situation no permanent members unlike previously minimum 14 games per club per season that's that's an insane amount of games that is really an insane amount of games uh, on top of everything that you're doing in your league. I think someone said in, in social media, right now, if you go all the way to the final, I think that's about 14 games. And that's just one or well, two teams going to the final. But this he per club, will play minimum 14 games. And on top of that, if I'm being absolutely honest, I can't see how Premier League teams do this. One of the biggest push for this to reappear again is clubs like you know in 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 Serie A your AC Milan Inter Milan Juventus all of these clubs and also in La Liga as well and other clubs they're struggling financially they're really struggling and, and this is why they want to create this to earn a lot more money they feel UEFA corrupted um, and, you know they don't tend to share a lot of the money that UEFA collects and they want to start this new league where They'll rebrand basically Champions League and money will be shared even evenly, you know, I suppose, against all of these teams. And you know, they feel like they can get a far bigger slice of the money. It all comes down to money, but I don't think how Premier League teams accept this. Premier League in itself is the Super League. Look at the way Nottingham Forest is moving. Look at the amount of money that they've spent. And this is a team that is lower table team. In the Premier League. Premier League is the Super League. The money in the Premier League is probably what driving, what's driving these clubs in other leagues to create this particular league because they feel like they're missing out on this level of money that the Premier League teams are enjoying. So I can't see how Premier League teams, even though dom domestic competitions will continue, but I can't see how they will dilute Premier League as a competition to start this on the side because let's face it it will dilute the premier league because everyone's going to be focused on the european super league and i don't think the premier league will allow it their competition to be diluted because of so much money that's in it so look i don't want to spend too much else on this i, I, I look i don't think maybe it might happen one day in the future but there's going to be a lot of fight there's going to be a lot of backlash and it's not going to be easy. So until something really, truly materializes, at the moment it's still in proposal st stage uh, status. You know, this is what it is. It's, it's, it's been proposed. Um, that's all I'm going to say in regards to European Super League. I don't think we need to worry about it too much right now um, until it actually materializes. As I said, the Premier League is the Super League. <laughs> I don't know why teams will leave this to dilute the competition. Do you know what I mean? Well, I'm not saying teams will leave this. You still continue playing it, but it does dilute the competition when you have something like European Super League, um, which which will probably generate a lot of money. And it will only generate a lot of money if the Premier League teams join. If the Premier League teams don't join, I don't think this European Super League really even kicks off. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you felt about everything we spoke about, especially Victor Oshiman. What's your thoughts? Is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? Lots of players need to be sacrificed, which is fine. And Kovacic, do you pencil him down as a potential Enzo Fernandez partner in the in the in the meantime until some of the other players potentially come back in the likes of Zakaria, Kante? Or do you think Kovacic and Enzo Fernandez, that is the partnership that you're looking forward to? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you have. If you're here for the first time, subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see ya.